This week on Vaticano, we bring you the story of the first millennial blessed, Carlo Acutis. Travel with us from Italy to the United States, from Cambodia to Argentina, to learn about how his charisma continues to inspire young people worldwide. And we'll make a stop in Assisi, Italy, to see how the city prepared his beatification. For this and more, Vaticano starts now. Carlo Acutis, who was beatified on October the 10th, 2020, grew up here in Milan, Italy. Today, Carlo is known and loved across the world for his example of holiness, for his passion for communications technology, and for his devotion to the Eucharist. Antonia Salzano, Carlo's mother, says her son made living the ordinary extraordinary. So even the little things in life, from everyday life, obviously being a boy of our times, he lived what all the young people of his generation lived. So computers, video games, football games, school, friends, everything that is normal to us. But certainly he knew. Everything that is ordinary in the world, he was able to turn into something extraordinary. Carlo's passion was the world of information technology. He was fascinated with the potential good it could bring. He decided to create a web-based resource where people could learn about the faith. Today, it's an apostolate that his family and members of the Association of Friends of Carlo Acutis continue to carry on. He was very good at filming, making films, and even using computers. What's more is that Pope Francis in Christus Vivid, which is the closing document of the Synod of Young People, wanted to dedicate a chapter to Carlo, in which he practically presents Carlo to all the young people all over the world as a model for how he was able to use the media. Above all, what he has done there are these exhibitions that were, above all, the one on Our Lady, on the Eucharistic miracles, which we say he then, for extraordinary coincidences, above all by, in our opinion, by the will of the Lord, then they spread throughout the world. The work that Carlo started now is available in 17 languages, and anyone can see the Eucharistic Miracles exhibit, even downloading the panels in high quality for free to print and place them in their parishes. The exhibition on Eucharistic miracles was something that engaged him. Let's start from about when he was 11 years old, the period that he began to be assistant catechist in the parish, because he had asked to be a catechist helper, and then sometimes he was able to teach the catechism by himself, because he was a very prepared boy, very ahead of those who were his age. Apart from the web resources, the association Amici di Carlo Acutis has also started producing cartoons to bring Carlo's message to children and young people. Joy is already to be found in this world. Already in this world? Of course, but we must always look towards God. In fact, sorrow is what happens when we look inwards, while joy is when we focus our gaze on God. By nourishing ourselves on the Eucharist, we feed on the love of Christ, and we live in Him. In this way, we can all become close friends with Christ. Antonia says that after his first communion at seven years of age, he never missed an opportunity to receive the Eucharist because it was his source of strength to live life with integrity. His deep faith and special relationship with the Eucharist helped even his mother to find her own path back to the church. 
aceptarlo, yo digo, ¿sabes? Carla, I always say, was a little savior for me. Because usually in families, it is the family who passes on the faith. In my case, it was the opposite. It is Carlo who, in fact, Carlo, I saw him a bit like a father, an authoritative figure. I did not see him so much as a son. That is, I felt him, yes, son. But I also saw him as something more. Because Carlo had this authority that was given to him, precisely by his closeness to Jesus, that one could see. She believes that Carlo continues to intercede from heaven, showing others the path to the church through the Eucharist. After the break, we'll take you to New York to visit one of thousands of Carlo's Eucharistic miracle exhibits present in parishes worldwide. More on Vaticano starts now. In upstate New York, around a two-hour drive from Manhattan, located in a valley among hills, is the town of Pauling, with a population of seven and a half thousand people. It's a small, quiet town with a vibrant Catholic population. And in the local church of St. John the Evangelist and St. Charles Borromeo, a special exhibition is on display. Large posters carefully placed in the pews beautifully illustrate miracles of the Blessed Eucharist. This is the Eucharistic Miracles of the World exhibition, designed and created by Carlo Acutis. Father John Palatucci is the pastor here. Well, this exhibition, uh, we started it, um, actually when I first arrived here, it was already here to promote the reality of the Eucharist. Uh, you know, we live in a time, unfortunately, where many Catholics are struggling with that belief. As a matter of fact, I think here in the States, there was a, something done recently about that, and nearly 60% of Catholics do not believe presence of our Lord in the Eucharist, which is a real challenge, you know. So the message is to get people to understand the miracles that actually have taken place over the centuries with the presence of our Lord in the Eucharist. So that's one of the primary things that we're doing here at the parish. Inside the church, each poster tells a story of a miracle from a different part of the world, detailing what took place, eyewitness accounts, and scientific verification. Because of the COVID-19 situation, we have to separate our pews and close some pews down. So it was a good idea to put them in those spots People come in uh, before Mass, they could read about the Eucharist and maybe elevate their belief uh, in the real presence of our Lord. Local parishioners stroll from poster to poster, taking their time to read the various accounts of the miracles. I didn't realize there were so many miracles. Uh, it's interesting, I enjoyed the one from Spain where the priest was going to take host to some sick people. And while crossing a river, he dropped the host into the water. And so he, was, he got out and he was stuck in the mud. And so some fishermen came over and um, they witnessed, they looked and there were three fish with hosts in their mouth. And they swam up the river and put the host back in the cup. Over the past several years, I think there's been a, a, a pulling away from the belief of of God in the Eucharist, Christ in the Eucharist. And I think through these miracles that they would have renewed interest and they would realize uh, the beauty of, of receiving God. In Pauling, this little town, my family is the fifth generation in this church. And they never had, they were wonderful priests, but we never had some of these wonderful examples and of what can happen to people when they believe. Among those here today is Jack Miller, 
the man who brought this exhibition to Pauling and oversees it. I was always in awe of the, uh, the way in which our Lord provides these miracles and, and, and mysteries of our faith and how the miracles then prove those uh, mysteries of our faith. There were so many and, and all such different stories of, in such amazing manners. E each one has a unique story to it. Each, each, each miracle is a, a separate miracle and they're all miracles. How could you look at any one of them and not be amazed by it? From what started as an idea of Carlo Acutis, it's grown into a worldwide exhibition, bringing stories of Eucharistic miracles to all corners of the globe. Well, as I look around at all these posters, I think of the, the young man, this 15-year-old boy, who, with inspiration and, and the grace of God, was able to reach out to millions of people and, and change their lives, hopefully, to realize the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. I gotta watch because I might tear up, but if we actually realized what we were receiving as the host touched our tongue, we would drop dead of joy. That's my firm belief. It's to promote the true understanding and belief of our Lord's true presence in the Eucharist. And these posters should be here until everyone in this parish understands and believes that. Father Will Conquer is a missionary of the Society of Foreign Missions of Paris in Cambodia. He learned about Carlo through the exhibition of Eucharistic Miracles in Rome in 2006. And ever since, Carlo has inspired him, giving an example of a new model of holiness. As I started researching, doing research about him, I realized how extraordinary his short life had been, and it really taught me a lot. I was blessed to meet with his family. I was especially touched by the encounter with Rajesh, who was uh, probably Carlo's best friend and uh, a worker in his family, and who eventually himself became Christian through the witness of Carlo. I was also touched by the encounter with Flavia, his cousin, his cousin who, like many of our cousins and families and brothers and sisters, had an experience of Christ, but slowly, slowly, slowly go away and kind of forget about their first love. And I was so blessed because when I met her last year, she was coming back to the faith through, through, she says, the intercession of Carlo. And I was so happy to be able to share this witness of faith that she had shared with Carlo. To be able to share it with her it was like meeting someone who had met a living saint, which was quite extraordinary for me. And so today as a missionary in Cambodia, my life is totally different, so far from what Carlo had known, but the mission is the same. It is to share the joy of the gospel with all people. And here is so urgent. With new technologies, the world is borderless for evangelization. And by using new technologies as Carlo did, everyone can contribute and fulfill the mandate of Christ to bring the gospel to every corner of the world. Diego Oliveira from the Carlo Acutis Association in Argentina is also inspired by Carlo's charism of online evangelization. In Latin America and in the world, they see Carlo as a friend. His love for informatics stands out. He considered the internet as a way of evangelization. Today, I affirm that he continues to evangelize through the web, and that is why he has reached the five continents. He continues to announce Jesus through new technologies. This is Carlo's secret. Carlo today is still alive in all the devotees through the social networks. In addition to the radio programs and online evangelization, the whole diocese of Rioja, Argentina, prepared to celebrate the beatification of Carlo. After a short break, we're going to visit his tomb and learn about the details of his beatification. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Vaticano.
Carlo Acutis is a blessed. From this point forward, the young Italian computer whiz can be officially venerated worldwide and people can seek his intercession. A flow of young pilgrims flooded the streets and piazzas of Assisi for his beatification on October the 10th. These young students from the Emmanuel Mission in Rome are dedicating a year to missionary activity, taking to the streets to spread the love of Christ. And Carlo is their example. Carlo Acutis is dla mnie przykładem. Carlo Acutis is for me an example of a man of our age, who gave his whole life to the Lord Jesus and at the same time was very joyful and had a lot of enthusiasm. He liked to travel, he had lots of friends, and this shows that we are too called to live holiness at this very moment of our lives. In such an ordinary everyday life, there are three things we need, the unity with the Lord Jesus through the Eucharist and confession. Because he, he lived in the same world as, as we do, he is very close to us and the, the way we live, and I think it is very um, moving to have um, such an example of a, an exemplary life which we can very easily relate to. He gives me hope for our time uh, because we're, we're, we live in a time where it's going, always going on about uh, the catastrophes and how our generation's sort of ruining everything. And uh, he gives me this hope of uh, our time is just as good as any other to, to be holy. He's praying me because uh, he's uh, an ordinary young man and uh, he can just uh, he just give all itself uh, with Jesus uh, to to others. The beatification mass took place on October the 10th in Assisi, Italy, the city of Saint Francis. Though separated by 800 years of history, St. Francis and Carlo Acutis shared a similar love for Christ and apostolic zeal. St. Francis changed the perception of sanctity, showing the real treasure of the faith is not in earthly riches, but in love for God, for our brothers and sisters, and for creation. Blessed Carlo, a child of the new millennium, succeeded in traveling the path to holiness in this age of information technology and social media. Tapping into the eternal tools of salvation, the sacraments and the Eucharist, he brought them to the new reality, to the digital world. Born in London, raised in Milan, Carlo is now entombed in Assisi's Old Town Church of St. Mary Major, in sanctuary of the Spoliazione, Italian for divesting, in reference to St. Francis' renunciation of riches. Here in this square, young Francis started his journey to holiness, divesting in front of his father and a crowd of people, putting away his past life and beginning a new one. Carlo instead finished his earthly journey and found his final destination here. A naked Francis was covered with his bishop's mantle and never after dressed in fine clothes. Carlo is still dressed in a hoodie, jeans and sneakers, the first blessed of the millennial generation. Carlo's example inspires young people from all over the world to follow Christ in the Eucharist.
An Italian YouTube star, Father Alberto Ravagnani, has found inspiration from Carlo's online evangelization. Finally, maybe even the internet has its patron saint. He was like many computer enthusiastic kids. He tried to use the web to bring the gospel message and inspire many people, and he did it well beyond his real responsibilities. Carlo is a young saint for young people. He is the one who has shown us that it is possible to be a saint today, in this century, while you're passionate about computers, while you're watching TV series, while you're living the life that the world is telling you to live. To be saints is possible today. For me, this is the greatest and most beautiful message that Carlo gives us. Interest in Carlo's story and example has already gone well beyond the borders of Italy. Father Piotr Wisniewski, head of EWTN Poland, tells us about a recent Eucharistic youth event in the city of Kowalczyk, Poland, which was dedicated to Carlo Akutis. On this poster, next to this joyful young boy, was the inscription, The Eucharist is a highway to heaven. I think that this is a very strong call for contemporary youth. That is why the young people who came to this event at the Skratsutsu Shrine, but also all of us young people in Poland, young people here in Rome, and young people all over the world, so that if they really look at the Eucharistic Christ, they realize that by holding on to it, they can reach heaven very quickly. And they can already touch heaven during their temporal life. And when they receive the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. And I think that the young people I had the opportunity to see here at this meeting understood it perfectly. They were very cheerful young people, praying, even though they had their faces covered with a mask for known reasons. But their eyes were happy. The eyes were saying that the Eucharist really matters to them. Carlo used to say that the Eucharist was his highway to heaven. And indeed, through the Eucharist, Carlo achieved heaven and now offers his example to all of us.